Hello and welcome to the Forgotten Games Director's Cut for our Masterclass special. If you haven't already seen the episode that this Director's Cut pertains to, you can find it on the screen here, and I recommend you watching it first. However, if you have, please enjoy the following 30 to 40 minutes of our thoughts, ideas, and discussions on the Commanders. Barrett the Infantry Commander. Anyway, so where does he stand? I want to give him, like, a three in the Weirwood. He's, he's a backline character with a lot of attack, but his attack boosts are better than Meryl. We gave Meryl two. And it's his damaging healing ability. Like, he, he, he lowers all heal effects on targets by 45%. Like, that's half healing. Plus, the 45% isn't a base 45%. So if his, um, like, Fever Pitch skill activates, which is 150 strategy, that 45% becomes 54. If you put in with Gina, that becomes 61 or something. So that's a lot of healing damage, especially if you can time it well enough in the Weirwood to knock down a commander. You're basically halving Sansa's ability. That is true, but I never use him, though. No. Barely. You never use it? I, I use him quite often if I'm against like either Simon or Sansa. Like, timing it just before that heal ability, if I can't get Varys to snipe them down in time, I, mean, I use Varys once, and then Varys isn't ready for the next time, but I can use Barrett's ability just to stop them from healing. It can it can kill someone. It cuts their ability in half. Yeah, but it makes him really situational. I would almost push that to two points. Yeah, but I... I I can't give him less than Meryl. I can't give him the same as Meryl. He's he's better than Meryl at the Weirwood. I agree in the training grounds he's only worth two points because he's just at infantry damage. Um, but I really think he's worth three in the Weirwood. You get your three. Yay! And then we just move to two in the training grounds because yeah. damage. Maybe it works now since they're using Simon more. That a beret may may add a little bit if he, he even gets his skills as well. Uh, Rebel lead is pretty much the same as Meryl. Yeah, pretty much the same as Meryl. I might argue a little bit worse because he's an infantry commander and you have others that fall into that. Um, you don't have a you have Arya, for example. Although you're still limited in some infantry commanders, so he still fits. Yeah, I'd give him the same as Meryl. Sure. It's always for me beret and Arya. Damage outputs, I would also push him to 4 because his damage output is high. And yeah, but it's it's not a god tier. I mean, he, he still has the 10,000 attack plus extra and so often, so... 4? Yeah, 4. He's not a god tier damage dealer, but he's still one of the highest out there. He adds a lot of attack and strategy, but not really to others, so that doesn't give him much support. Yeah, his support is 0, but his crowd control is 1. For the, the anti-heal effect. For the anti-heal, definitely. Um, overall, his skills score maybe a little bit higher than... Yeah, I'd say Meryl. a two. Not, yeah. The main thing is his skills are better than Meryl, though, as well. Because it does the same damage as Meryl, plus it removes healing. Instead of the evade, he gets an extra 2,000 to attack. That he also is, increases yeah, his strategy yeah. with other things. Like, yeah, two. Yes. I mean, there's no game-breaking skills, but they're better fit for a damage dealer. Definitely. Yeah. His greed, his passive skill, is much better for a damage dealer than evade. And there's oh, yeah. a lot of lot of damage dealers who has actually evade. So for that alone, I would give him the extra point indeed. This combat advancement is kind of interesting because it gives infantry health and defense. But in a way, you want infantry health and defense if that's it, your Exactly. Point. They boost the two stats you want for your frontline infantry. So it's definitely a three here. Okay, three, yes. Yeah, it's not, if he had another infantry, then it would be a five, maybe, but he's a, he's nope. a three for combat advancement, easily. And stone production has access. Again, it's a one. He has something. Okay, friendship is a little bit more, I think six. Um, and I, I'm quite sure he has combat rate as well. Let's see where he is for me. Uh, he's gold, level 48 for me. He has indeed six points. Uses wine, which is which is my top wine commander. That's indeed because I couldn't upgrade Tyrion any further. So then the best up if you max out Tyrion, if you haven't have gold, you can just freely go for Barret, and he uses the wine as well, giving you three combat yeah. rate. It's not it's not that useful. He has three combat rate, which is nice. However, his overall all quality is only six. So I say two points there. Two points is safe. Yes. Yeah. 
If he had like one or two more stars, it could have been argued that he could be worth a three, but he's not worth... He's, he only has six. We can't give him a any more. It gives him 22. I, he's a fairly decent commander. He's also easy to upgrade, which I like. Right, Meryl Peak. All his skills are based on doing damage, except his evade. Pretty much just like yeah. Soren, I suppose? No, he, ha he has an okay... Part of it, one of his skills, the Exiled Noble, does give him... Um, 30% extra to control resilience, so he's better against stuns and poisons if they hit against him. Yeah, but he's definitely a backline character. He's yeah, he's, 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 his defense is one of the weakest in the game. Insanely low health. Yeah, uh, insanely low health, one of the weakest defense. He does really good damage against infantry, though. Yeah. So he has to get a couple of points as a backline, because it's not like you put him in the backline and you lose out on someone else. Oh, definitely. I would always, always put him on uh, rebel leaders. Yeah, so in, in the Weirwood, whenever you're against an infantry-heavy formation, he deal he does wondrous damage to clear a lane. Uh, unfortunately, he's not a tank, so you've got to put him in second row. However, purely for the ability to clean up the second row means his damage dealer, if you're against infantry, you can put someone like Sansa in the front because the defense will hold on long enough for Meryl to clear the clear the way. Giving you effectively an extra backliner. True. So, but it, it it depends on an awful lot of factors. Yes. I want to give him two points in the werewolf. I was thinking too as well because it's really critical. It needs to have uh, certain conditions before you can even apply him. And he doesn't do anything for the rest of the team. Okay, that okay. is good. Uh, training ground. I would. I would two... give him a two as well. Yeah, two maybe. You'd, yeah, yeah very situational. His skills, yeah, his skill. Hey, look, if you're against an infantry commander. He's wonderful. But in the training grounds, you can change that on the fly. He doesn't have any amazing skills, but his base damage is good enough, I think, to warrant two points for the training grounds. Definitely. So, rebel leaders, I would hinge between four and five. Um, I wouldn't give him all the way to a five because he's not like Genie. I don't use him in every single formation. Mm -hmm. If there's no infantry, I'm not going to use him. His attack just isn't that great to counter the difference bonus however if there is infantry i use him every time has to be used so i want to give him a four there yep plus he's accessible to all types of players yeah um he's very fairly easy to level up as well and he does have some like he can deal damage against a big stunner or things like that so let's see he does have a critical of 153 yeah, that's that's another plus. Like his critical rate is really high, it means when he does do critical, he does do an awful lot of damage. He's but, a very good damage dealer. That's it. True, but his strategy is also very high, so that doesn't really boost yeah. his attack much more. He he still gets like a twenty percent thirty. No, he gets a he still gets a um yeah twenty percent buff from Gene, which isn't negligible. The fact is his damage is already high, so you add your twenty percent to that. It's not bad at all. Okay, so damage output also four maybe. Yeah, I'd say the four for damage. Because he doesn't depend on his skills. It's his base that really helps him out there. True. Okay. I think he has one of the highest base attacks in the game. What? Support and crowd control is a big fat zero. Yep. And skills... There's nothing. Two, uh, hit, like, two. two maybe. I, I wouldn't even go that high. His skills are all based. They're simple. They're doing a bit of damage. There's not much flexibility in them. And okay. there's extra chance and then a shit evade. I would only give him one for the skills. Okay, I can go with that. Yeah. If we think about just damage dealer skills, Obin does twice as much damage in his skills. Arya does three times as much. Barrett does more damage in his skills. So in terms of actual skills, how useful an individual they are, only one. Okay, when it comes to combat advancement, I would like to push him to three because he has the best yeah, skills I would e recovery. I would either either easily give him a three. Like the health and attack, three. Iron production is maybe one. Yeah, again, it's a high perform specialty, but he technically has some, so we can't give him zero. Okay. When it comes to friendship, I don't see him too often, meaning he's very low for me. Yeah, he's still level 7 for me. 5 points, 3 aptitude to command. Well, he does, yeah, he does have 7. Um, so he's not completely useless. No, he has 5. Overall quality is 5. Yeah, he's five. 
I thought you said seven. No, he is level seven for me, sorry. Yeah, okay, and he needs alcohol, which you need for quite a few other commanders, so he gets a one here. Uh, if even. Let's see. Um... Yeah, he's not useless with weapons, but you're going to be putting all your booze into Tyrion anyway, or other people like that. That will give him 18, 18 points. Not bad, but he's mainly a damage dealer. Well, that's where all his skills come from. We are arriving at Arslan. It's a bit in the League of Meryl Peak and Beret and all the... Sort of. Also, one of the first commanders you unlock, one of the ones you're most excited by, then your first lesson into glass cannoning and the need for tanks. He has been hanging a long time at the bottom of my commander list, though, for being so utterly useless until I really started focusing seriously on um, rebel leaders. He's an interesting one where he's probably the worst commander you come across. Absolute worst. Until you start getting commanders to about purple. And then you realize, hang on a second. What would you say, Will? I would give him one, maybe. I really... Well, I never use him. It's just simple as that. Let's see, I, I use him an awful lot against cavalry heroes, as you might imagine. Of course, you have Jamie and Julian. Yeah, you have Jamie and Julian that covers that. Um, but he has a very high base attack. Um, he also launches three attack that deals 12,000 damage plus an additional damage when the target's health is low. He does an awful lot of damage. He adds crit and restores more might, which allows him to get more damage off. Like, if you combo him well, he can deal an awful lot of damage and his crit is, is ludicrously high. That's true, like but it, that makes him more useful because his skills don't add anything. I would like go Wayward 1, Training Ground 2, because I've seen him more often in the Training Grounds. And their Rebel Leaders, he can spike to a 4, maybe, like that kind of... Yeah, maybe, I can see that, yeah. I mean, it seems a little bit low for me on the web because I use him, but again, if I had Julian, if I had Jamie, I probably wouldn't use him in those instances, so... I'm going to have to, yeah, a one, a two, and then a four. Ooh, really want to power through these. A damage output, he has <laughs> to have a four. Same, yeah, four. Uh, no, no, not really power, but um, there's some just some commanders that you don't really have to hang on a lot of the long time. So, um, support. He doesn't have any support. He doesn't have any support. He doesn't have any crowd control. He's a big fat zero on both of those. Yep. So his, he pumps up his crit a little bit like Arya, pretty much, and his attack. That makes him pretty good uh, his, at dealing damage. Yeah, not only that, he does restore 500 might um, when his rise to the occasion ability procs, um, which is a fair amount of might, actually. 500's a, like a good half a bar, if not more, uh, to use his ability. His main advantage comes from the fact that he doesn't rely on his skills to do a lot of damage, as it were. All his skills boost his base damage, and he's looking at over 450 crit. Now, I don't know what that transfers to uh, in game, but that's I think the highest crit rate in the in there. It wasn't so the area there? I'm just wondering about rise to the occasion. When does it proc? Does it proc just once in the entire battle? That I do not know, but once in a battle is often all you need for that ability. If you think about how many times you get it off, in comparison, Arya's crit. It hovers around 320 max. So, Arslan at 450, extra 50% on top of that. Yeah, his ability, have, you just reread his sand strike for a second. Aslan launches three attacks on a target, each deal nearly 12,000 damage, plus 37,000 additional damage when the target's health is less than 30. So, potentially, you're looking at 22, 33, 36,000 just from his ability damage the funny thing is i never really see that when i use him yeah that's because the damage does get taken apart by the skills the enemy defense comes into play but as a single damage dealer he's probably the highest because of his skills now he doesn't have any stacking abilities like aria so his damage output is storm four but for overall skills i think i give him a three because that's the single biggest damage in one attack you can you can find in the game all right, and um, we don't want to move his damage output to five. Then, if you, the problem I think with his damage output is his only real ability to increase his attack is based on one attack, one ability that only lasts for five seconds. 
The rest are based on crit, so while he does do more damage, his base attack isn't going to be more than 8,000. Like, Arya can potentially get her base attack to 15,000, which is over double. Okay. Uh, there are other commanders. Even Barrett gets his base attack to about 11,000. Other commanders like that. So he just he falls off slightly. There. You're too dependent on the randomness of crits in order to catch up, and that's not a position you want to be in. Okay, yeah, we can a little bit much of it. I would have given him two points for skills, but if we don't put him in damage output, then that kind of compensates both. So we keep it like that. Okay. Um, combat advancement, he has Spearman Attack and Spearman Health. Uh, I use him in, well, almost all my formations, actually. I would give him a three for this, I have to say. Three. Yes, um, also yeah. because the scarcity of Spearman... Commanders. Scarcity of Spearman uh, Commanders is an easy one to get to. Spearman Health is good for the front line. Spearman Attack is good for the front line and second row. So he's a flexible Spear Commander you can use anywhere when Spears are in the battle line. And it's 30%. It's not like it's 15. Okay. So if you're using Spears in your army, you want to have him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, City of Fountain Wood is one. And I think Friendship is pretty much like the rest of the damage the the free to play damage healers they all score really bad on friend list yeah pretty much he he's another alcoholic he has three in command two in aptitude he's a, a very average one star like if it wasn't for the if if he had weapons he would possibly be another zero but he's a he's a one because he wants wine well that gives him 19 which is not bad He's not a bad character. Like Originally, when you start, you don't think much of him because of how quickly he dies. You can't really use him in the Weirwood. But once you sort of clock onto the fact that you can put Sansa in the front row and Aslan behind, you're a lot happier. Admittedly, you still need to get him to a certain level so he doesn't die to area of effect attacks. He is seriously squishy. But the damage output is the single highest in one attack. He can be very useful. Soren, oh, this is another one that we got a lot to talk about. Um, I kind of never use them in Weirwood. I, okay, another one I think we're going to disagree on. I would give him like a, a three, slightly better better than average. No, two, average. You think two? Yeah, I don't use them at all. I mean, you, you just can, His you, extremely high damage and damage potency really worked for me. Yeah, I don't... I don't he, he's, oh no, he's, not a spe he's also not a specific counter. Okay, yeah, two. Two, yeah. Training grounds, I would push him to three because he has a high base damage and reduced heal effects, which can help in many uh, occasions. As well, has some form of survivability for himself. Oh yeah, his his evade um, means if the fight goes on long enough, I've seen three four hits miss him completely, which is marvelous. So definitely a three there. He's not a must-have, but he's a he's always a good. Uh, well, I'm just gonna okay. I'm just gonna throw in Soren because I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe it's same against Revelage. I think you're gonna use him a lot. Um, it, somebody... Yeah, he doesn't have any specific bonus, but just the pure damage he does. He doesn't have a specific counter, so he suffers there. But a three, I think at least. And damage I'd put, I would. Yeah, he has a very high base attack. I would also put. I on... think w w with his skills, it has to be the four or five for damage. Four. Is... Well, he does. Well, he does reduce heal effect, so he's good against healers. Does that make him support? Maybe that one. gives him one support skill. Yeah. Yeah. Technically one. Mm, zero crowd control. His skills, maybe. Yeah, maybe two or three. A bit of average. Nothing special. Definitely nothing special. Yeah. I think average. There's nothing special. It's a lot of damage. Um, he so, has a bit of survivability yeah. himself, but he doesn't. He doesn't really help in a formation. He's a lone wolf. Okay, let's basically. let's just hit me in the face first for not doing the pointers. No, he also <laughs> has high strategy, so he doesn't get buffs very well. So his skills are two. So Weirwood was two. Training ground was three. Rebel leaders was three. Four. Rebel leaders was was Rebel leaders three or four? I would no, not four. Wasn't okay, yeah, three. Damage output four. Yeah, damage output four. Support oh, 1, wow. crowd control 0. Skills. Oh, actually, think about his skills. The evade is a bit useless. Adds a 1,000 attack is very low. Attacks only have a 15% chance of dealing extra damage yeah. and reducing the heal effects. I think his skills are 1. 
One, very good. Like, he's a damage dealer without a massive damage boost. Sure, he does. He can do an awful lot of damage, but that's purely because of his base stats. Like, you put any other damage dealer skills on him, suddenly he becomes better. So, I think a one. Yeah. Okay, then we have uh, zero combat advancement. Because he has yeah, none. Zero, zero combat advancement. And city advancement, I would almost push him towards five because... If if it's any command that you should put at five, let me know. Maybe four. Yeah, no, I th I think four. He would have had five, but the fortification construction is useless. True. Like the research speed is amazing. That would give him a two or a three by himself. The gold is worth a point. So I'd say four. He doesn't get five, so it's four overall for his skills. We've had that before. His fortification construction increase is, is shit. It's useless. It's bollocks. It's fucked up. It's wankered. It has ceased to be. It is an X skill. It has met his maker. It is pushing up the daisies. It is seeding in the bloody okay, okay. heavy choir. Okay. Okay. Um, I never gave him anything on friendship either. He's taken the, the, the food um, out of Russell and Gorel's mouth, to be honest. Let's see what the friendship is like. I think I've got him on 20, but purely because I'm capped sometimes on abilities. Uh, look, he's one of the ones that gives command. No, no, command. He does give a bit of aptitude. Yeah. Yeah, he's not that great with meat. I He only has five overall. Give him a one. He's he's a five. He's a low character, and none of his skills are redeeming, so he gets a one. He's not useless, because it's not like a weapon. You remember that I gave Chris a zero, huh, for this self? Uh, yes, and it's basically the same as Chris, but Chris uses weapons. Oh, yeah, And that's true. Soren does use meat. You are right. So... It's just the difference. It's just because Chris used weapons, we give him a zero, because technically they do have something. It's only because he uses meat here instead of weapons. Weapons are too valuable. Okay, then we have uh, 19 points for Sori. Not too bad for the Bolton ripoff. So yeah, Miranda does a ton of single target damage, which should potentially make her ideal for rebel leaders. Yeah, Werewood can be interesting if you've got a very big cavalry tank, like you. Miranda's very useful to add to Varys, to add to Arslan, to add to... But the problem is there's Julian, there's Hector now, there's Uma. Miranda's seriously being shifted down, point-wise. Yeah. Werewood, I'd only give her like a one or a two. Like, she doesn't have enough defense to be a tank, and her attack is a bit too low, honestly, to be a DPS. If you can combo her attack with someone else, it becomes a lot higher. But then you're reliant on the combo and yeah. the timings. And I'm really looking on who you can combo with, especially uh, when you look to rebel leaders. I'm really struggling finding anything. Yeah, um, well, if we talk about the where would you're going to be using, say... Uh, I'm trying to find them. Right, the uh, maybe Barrett with his Scar ability, yeah. uh, which causes bleed. Uh, Raymond with his burning ability, but there's not that many of these abilities going on. So I think maybe one or two for the Weirwood, one for the Training Grounds. There's, there's much better alternatives out there, and her Evade is only 500 cat tops, and that's every three seconds, and then you have... It goes down to 240 for six seconds and then back up and so on it's it's a waste of a couple of skills i the, the, we've got uma now we've got hector we've got varus we've got aslan each one is better yeah but she would make a good counter so i would give her one on the railroad and two on the training ground you think it'll be good as a counter I mean, is, if you if you're countering maybe if you're against a very heavy cavalry formation if the enemy's running say front row of kevin russell and rob she can be useful but barring that, you, you've got other spear heroes to take control of the situation, to play instead of her better ones. So, you, you, well, I don't want to give her two on the weirwood. To be honest. <sighs> okay, we'll give her one, two. Uh, no, we'll, we'll give her one, two, but I don't think she's going to score very highly. She, she's just been deplaced. Like, there's no real place for an formation anymore. Okay. I mean, there's some use in rebel leaders, but... If you're attacking a cavalry hero, okay, so you're attacking a cavalry, your formation is going to be Genie as the tank, then you're going to have Aslan, then you're going to have Varus, then you're going to have Uma. No, so got... stop. No? Rebel leaders, you're not going to bring Varus. 
Oh no 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 sorry not yeah not the rebel leaders. Mm, she has a solid place in in the rebel leaders, and I think she will do a fair amount of damage, uh, especially because she has all these uh, attack added, and she does do deal bonus damage when they're poisoned. And her frog spear is really focused on single target damage, so she will get that three it times. It's, it's all it's all single. I mean. The problem is I keep comparing her to Aslan. She's just not as good, but you do have room for six commanders on a rebel leader. Yeah, I'll, I'll so... give her a three because I think she, she, if she gets her skill a few times off, she will do a great chunk of damage. I don't think Arslan has that specifically, that he does a very high burst. Yeah, he does have very high burst. He also has um, higher base attack, which oh. does help. Um, His sense strike is actually almost similar to hers. It is, uh, it, but his sand strike does about twenty thousand more damage, okay. and that's not in counting the ability where he does more more damage if the attack target's health is less than thirty. So her ability does twenty or thirty thousand less than Aslan. Okay, we gave Revelators for Aslan f four, so she gets a three, and the same counts for damage output. So it's just one less than Aslan. Okay, as for uh, support, she's got none. No. She, it's, it's all personal. And then it's so it's no support, no crowd control. Skills overall, I really find lacking. If there were more poison out there, more burning, more, more bleed, I'd think she'd be a lot better, but I don't think it's worth more than a one. Yeah, I would push it to two because she has a very interesting set, but there is. The problem is, literally, you don't have anyone to put her with that really can help her keep up the Krennicman uh, poison constantly. No, it, ex exactly, it's interesting, but it's it doesn't they don't work in many formations. Like, hmm, do you really feel strongly that she's two? She's an average, not below average. Yeah. Okay, we'll go one. Yeah, because the scale isn't one to five; it's zero to five. So, two is right in the middle, and. It either e a little bit of a change. One one of her skills is completely useless. Two hundred and forty evade. There are much better skills out there. It seems of a wasted slot. The Cranium Poison is two and a half additional a thousand additional damage to poison burning or bleeding. There's not enough poison burning or bleeding for it to be reliable. If there are a couple more poison burning or bleeding options in other commanders, this would be very good. But as it stands in a formation, you're nearly only going to be use it with her, and then it's only when she does her skill. And her poison only lasts for three seconds. So maximum you're looking at extra 5,000 damage. And if you think 5,000 damage from a skill, Chris does 20,000 from his skill. Rob does 20,000, 25,000. Garel does 15,000. 5,000 isn't a lot. It sounds good, and it would be with extra burn, bleed, or, or poison. But you can't get it to work. That's fine. A combat advancement. Okay, yeah, it, it, has to, it has to be four. We can't give it five. Because it's, we're saying it's the same as Jon Snow for combat. Well, in, technically, if you run a spearman, full spearman, Jon Snow is going to give twenty-five on total defense attack and health, which is less technically for for one troop. I know, true, uh, but how? But especially five for the cavalry. When are you going to run cavalry front? You're not. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> okay, so it's a four on combat advancement. Um, do we have... Okay. Okay. That's a four. And let's just um, finish this. So zero on city advancements because she has none. Now let's quickly check a friendship. Maybe some redeeming. Yeah, it's, it's a bit an average GDPS dealer. I did get uh, several people saying that she's amazing. But overall quality, seven. Combat rate, four. Finance quality... Three, and it's just combat. She likes dessert. I think maybe because of the high combat, like a four combat, is as high as uh, Sabrina is as high as Sheila. What do you think? Like a, like a three or a two? Okay, her overall quality is two because it's not yeah. a five. Her finance um, does nothing. Her combat rate brings it up. But she uses dessert, and weapons and desserts were the top ones. So it's a two. So it's a two. A high two. 
Okay, but I do think it's one of the higher combat rates for the Zerge, but it was similar to uh, less free to play. Okay, yeah. that makes her have a beautiful score of 14, 16. 16 uh, is okay. She's a generic DPS for spell. Hectorius! So, attacks... Uh, okay, Hector. Weirwood. Hector attacks the enemy with his Valyrian Steel Spear, dealing piercing damage and additional damage to ranged tar targets. That's interesting. De yeah, dealing 7,000 damage um, and more uh, 7,000 more to the enemy behind if they're ranged. So it's, it's a good damage dealer for the back line. Um, it's not that high. Well, That's... It, it's not that high. It is fourteen thousand overall, um, but for a tank, that's not bad. Average strategy as well, five hundred. Uh, Six hundred and fifty-two total. So he's still within buffable range. Like uh, if well, if you had a Marjorie, you're looking at twenty thousand damage to bows. If you had a Genie, you're looking at eight thousand five hundred damage. So it's still a nice increase. Um, his best one, though, of course, is Hector Unbroken. Gains 6,500 defense for every ally defeated. Yes. Last until the end of the round. And that is definitely already a bonus point in the training round. Yeah, that is... Dude, well, if people die on either side, you're looking at four people, because you're never putting them in the back. So maximum four people die before he does. Um, well, two people, really, because he's a front row tank. People take the front row down. So, okay, Max, he's going to get... But it's still 13,000 extra defense, which is another tank on top. So he's looking at 25,000 base defense if he's the last tank standing. Yeah. And his attack has a 30 chance sensor to reduce the target's attack by 4,000. That can affect last five seconds. That can stack, I suppose. Um, yeah, it, it's a 30% chance, but you can think that with a 30% chance and it lasts five seconds, chances are it will always be affected somehow. Yeah. Like it will, it will, chance are it will renew itself within the five seconds. Uh, if it doesn't, then it will renew itself quite soon after. And it reduces that max, it reduces the target attack by 5,000. Now, it's only one target, but it helps him to stay alive and be the last tank standing with over 25,000 defense. Definitely. And then add an extra 6,000 defense, you're 30,000 defense. And that is a passive you need. That is, I mean, that's a useful passive. I it think is. we're looking almost for a tank, we're looking almost at a at a five star on skills right there based on the skill set for the type of champion if you look at that specific. yeah i th yeah i think maybe four he's not quite mm, it's i say four yeah oh no i must push the perfect because it, it's the perfect no. it, well it's the perfect tank it, it, it is it is nearly a perfect tank Miss but obsession. one of his abilities is on a 30 percent chance only and the additional and without the additional damage to bowmen, his damage to other people from his core spear is one of the lowest. No, you're right. Of a single line. So that's why I'd only give him four. Like it's a close thing, but Okay, we would uh we would almost always have ranged uh, characters in the back line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as for a for central tank against cavalry, I think we're gonna run him a lot. Like he's gonna keep whatever whatever you put behind him, it's gonna be safe. But he has no crowd control. That's true. I'd say purely for the defensive and outlast means in things like Werewood Memories they'll be very useful. Um, his skills let him down slightly in terms of damage dealing, so maybe just for his massive defense I think a three. Yeah. I'm kind of almost aiming towards like two Werewood, four training grounds something like that. Um, it's true, he will do a lot better in training grounds. Give him some extra bonus in the training grounds rather than bonus in the Werewood if we have to push that. Let's put two in Werewood for now, and yeah, four in Training Grounds. He's, he's, he doesn't have any stuns, but his abilities don't require focusing. He damages an opponent's damage, damage dealer. Or, we'll think with, think with 5,000. Yeah, with 5,000 attack less. To put that in perspective, he's going to be fighting against the tank, isn't he? That's, yeah. that's what he's there for. So, because he's Spearman, you're going to want to put him against a cavalry tank in front. So what are you going to do? You're going to put him against Russell. Russell only has 5,000 total attack. Yeah, it does nothing. Or you're going to put Rob. Rob only has 5,200. So you're reducing Rob's attack to 200. You're reducing Russell's attack to zero. So when it comes to training ground matchup, like he's, he's not a pick every single time. 
but he's definitely a four. Yeah. However, if the opponent's running cavalry, you use him. Yeah. However, Revelator, I would only maybe give him a one because he has no basic damage. What you could yeah, almost do is... No buffing. Yeah, and the, 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 the Cohort Spear does not work or does only work half. Um, yeah, because it's also a line. Actually, can we put three Weirwood, four training grounds? Because he's going to be on one Rebel Leader, one on damage output, zero on support. Yeah, because he's 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 a one on Rebel Leader. He's a one on damage output, isn't he? Yeah. On support, he's a zero. Yeah. On crowd control, he's a zero. Can we give him a one for support? Just because he can make uh, the one behind him pretty much invulnerable or himself? Uh, no. I don't know. I'm thinking... We could do, I suppose, but it's not. Uh... Oh, we certainly could do. Well, he reduces the target's attack by X. So that's either a point in support or crowd control. I think he gets a point in crowd control from that because it damages the enemy. But he doesn't have anything to help allies, really, apart from keeping them alive. But that's the basic requirements for a tank. Okay. Skills are four, easily. So he scores there pretty well. Now, then we quickly run to its combat advancements. Well, that is absolutely painful. What is it on goals? Um, again, it's a Spearman Defense, 40. A spearman Attack, 40. And Enemy Cavalry Health Reduction, 15. So I'd say a... Four? Three. He has no city advancements, eh? He yes, is he's know, yes. the perfect anti-cavalry. Yes, he's the perfect anti-cavalry, but you, ideally you want to be, if you're doing that, for, to use his skills, either you've got Spearman second row, which is great, or you've got Spearman front row, and Spearman front row, well, Spears aren't the strongest there. So you're sacrificing a bit there um, in terms of complete combat. And one of his skills is purely only active if you're fighting cavalry and if the enemy has an infantry cavalry formation and you've got a spear front because that's his best you're actually going to take more damage from the infantry by having the spears out there so it's a bit of a double-edged sword so you, what you want to do is basically have the infantry in uh, the, the spearman in the second row in that case his spearman defense doesn't come into play in anyone if you could use all his skills properly it would be a four but you can only ever really use two of the skills at one time, otherwise you risk taking too much damage. Yeah. Okay. Unless you know for sure that someone is attacking with pure cavalry. If that's the case, but that means you're going to have to scout people, and how often do you get a scout off before you can attack? And even then you can't see formations. It's true. Uh, but I was more also thinking about uh, because he gives 40% rather than what the... Uh, oh, the... yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, no, no, no. Pop him on four. I forgot the 40%. It's ten percent more. Okay, we win. Yeah. Well, you had a very good point, which I had a total oversight of. Well, so that's interesting. It's in between sort of three and four, but I I was running off thirty percent. I like that extra ten percent is nothing to scoff at. Um, even uh, just like oh, the way I was thinking that the forty percent spearman attack is worth two, maybe three. Add to that the cavalry health debuff means putting him on second row is the best. And the forty percent swings it really. Interesting. Okay, uh, friendship. Uh, well, uh, city advancement, nothing. Friendship is eleven points, three aptitude, four finance, and four leadership. Uh, leadership's nice. That four leadership is definitely nice. And just when it comes from um, from a free to play standpoint. Hector at level 20 is responsible for one sixth of my leadership. Yeah. He does need weapons, however. He does have an overall quality of 11. I'm thinking three. Yeah. You can't give him two, you can't give him four. 21. First things first, we have Sabrina. And now has taken the throne from Tyrion of the hardest free to play commander to obtain. Yeah. Before it was Tyrion, you needed time, but. Now, Sabrina is definitely the hardest. So, I did hear some people say that she has an insane high attack. I think it's more her abilities that increase the attack of everyone else. Yeah, you know, well, not only does she have a, a very respectable high base attack, um, being a bow hero as well helps there uh, with a high prowess. She also boosts everyone's attack. 
Now, at level 60, uh, Sabrina, her ironclad ability, uh, Ironborn do not trade, they take what they want from their enemies, and deals 20,000 damage to targets. Just a flat 20,000 damage to targets. I can't remember what the range is, uh, but deals an extra 2,500 additional damage if target's health is less than 50%. Uh, so this is basically the second time you use that skill, it will always damage. Uh, do you know how big the ironclad effect is? Do you want to test that? Because that can change dramatically, because it's a base 20,000. Okay, so okay. her ability is a single target, yeah? Yeah, single target, she can okay. reach half of the board uh, from the backline. So, well, if she's in the middle, she'll be able to hit anybody, I think. Or four of them. Okay, let's let's hit it on grey. Okay, that almost snipes it. Yeah. Um, yeah, with another with another like Chris's stun. Now those are snipeable. Um, I'm thinking if maybe if Sabrina's in the middle back, will she be able to hit everything? That's that's an important question. But it's still a snipe. Yeah, it's decent. Not really special. Yeah. Okay, so it's just a base base attack. Fair enough. The second wind, the Ironborn do the bidding of the Drowned Gods, add 3,000 to attack for 90 seconds. Okay, basically adds 3,000 to attack. Um, which is, it's it's an amount. Like, it's an extra 30%, 40% for most damage dealers, so it's okay. Storm of Allies, uh, Storm of Arrows, unleash a barrage of arrows, heralding death and despair. Attacks have a 30% chance to deal an additional... 5,000 damage to targets. Triggers once every 5 seconds. So it's a little bit of extra damage. You're talking 5,000 every... F uh, triggers once every 5 seconds has a 30% chance to deal extra damage. So in a fight you're looking at an extra 10,000. It's not great. Uh, her, her best ability is probably the old way. That adds 180 prowess to all allies. Yeah, it's not too much. I think... Uh, would that justify her to put her in... Uh... Yeah, rebel leaders. That's why you want to use that. Uh, but you don't fight bowmen. Yeah, I think if you're if you're attacking a bow rebel leader, um, you want uh, your your lineup will contain her because she'll increase all the bowman damage. Not not a lot, but she has the advantage there. Just think if you're doing a bow, what it will be? It will be Soren. It will be Sheila. It will be uh, Gina. Theon. It will be the well Theon, obviously. Yeah. So, just as a comparison, the Wild Hunt of Sheila only does 10,000, and that's considered a decent snipe. Well, she only oh, yeah, she's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but definitely I didn't, a good snipe. I didn't really see it in the way what I just played. It was more, yeah, how to put it. Well, the thing is, you were attacking people that had 25,000 uh, health. Her ability at max does 20,000, which is still a snipe. Uh, it's like if they take a little bit of damage before, it's a wonderful finisher skill. And 20,000 is nothing to scoff at. It's not quite the same as Ariel or Arslan. Um, but 20,000 for a werewood snipe is okay. But And her bonus is always applicable, extra damage. It's just the opportunity cost is too high. I don't think she's worth more than a 2 in the werewood. Yeah, yeah if I compare it to Sheila, uh, she does have some skills that boost it. But in the end, it's all a little bit less. Then Sheila, except her snipe, is a little bit stronger. The thing with Genie, Genie's uh, buff um, buffs the strategy, which buffs the skills, and would be more than, say, Sabrina's prowess increase. Okay, Weirwood. Well, if you can use Sheila, you can use her as well. Yeah. Um, I, she, I think interchangeable with Sheila, to be honest. Um, so what do we put for Sheila? The thing is, she has a slightly less base attack than Sheila. Okay, I'm saying... Weirwood 2. Yep. Training Grounds 2. 2, maybe. She doesn't have a. She doesn't counter anything. She doesn't get the bonus. 2 might be a bit generous for. Yeah, but uh, we can't, if they compare it to Sheila, they're going to complain about it. Um, Rebel Leaders. Yeah. Three, yeah, but you can't target two. her snipe as well. It's just a big burst of damage. Rebel Leaders. I would go three because you boost the rest as well. So that makes three, her e equal. Three for, yeah, three, but we say it's it's really good for bow formations. There are better out there. And damage output also three. Damage output three, yeah. Uh, support is a one. And that way she's a little slightly worse than Sheila, but... 
uh, compared to her, we can actually justify everything. Okay. The thing is, Sheila's base attack is higher than Sabrina, so in a longer fight, she does more. And she has a stun. True, yeah. Okay, skills, I would go two. Two, yeah, they're a bit lackluster. They're average. They all work towards the same goal, so it's not like they fight against each other. Combat zero. And city five. Five? Yeah. Construction 20, research 25, training speed 20. Same as Raymond. Oh, yeah, five. Yeah. Overall quality 10, uses jewelry. Has, that's the right one for jewelry. Command rate 3, leadership 4. Command 3. That's a 3. Uh, should we go 4? Um, because she, right. she would technically be the best commander to do for jewelry. Um, just because of the... Oh yeah, yeah, leadership, combat rate. Command's not great, but it's only 3. Yeah, but there's literally no other jewelry commander that can give any form of leadership and combat rate only. True. Yeah, give her four, because she's the best jewelry commander, so it's nearly an automatic, like, boost. Okay. She doesn't score overall that high, but at least that will help her a little bit. I, it's not too bad, you know, as compared to others. 19, 17. No, 22. What? 22, yeah. That's, that's decent. Uh, that's too much, by now. By now. <laughs> Almost. What do we have for Sheila? Uh, 19, I think. But she has really bad friendship with that. Yeah. No, I think that's fair. She's a bit better than Sheila. I think that's a fair assumption. Like, Sheila's better in just plain combat, but Sabrina's overall skills, friendship, and city means that she's better. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a fair average. You do realise um, whoever does the intro for this one, which I think is your turn, you're going to have to go through the entire title. First of all, let's look at the abilities. Summons a fire-breathing dragon, dealing 19,000 damage to a target in a straight line. And second target is on fire, dealing 1,500 damage every half a second for 5 seconds. So you're looking at 35,000 damage. It hurts a lot. I've had, um, in a straight line, in a pretty broad line. Yeah. I've had her breathe on my Simon, and um, Simon could outheal her, but others uh, definitely got uh, spluttered by it in the training ground. Yeah, 35,000 damage is enough to take a tank down half or even clear a back grow. Uh, so it's an extremely dangerous ability. It even It's the same as Arslan's single snipe, but it hits both players. Plus it's burning damage, so you pair it with Mir Miranda or something. Extra damage there. Uh, she also has one of the highest base attacks in the game with a base of over 2,300 prowess, which is just silly, to be honest. Uh, then Khaleesi inspires her warriors every 10 seconds, adding 10,000 to attack and 30% to control resilience for 5 seconds. Yeah. So that's her own attack that gets boosted even more. Fortune favors Daenerys in battle, adding 600 strategy every 5 attacks for 5 seconds. Okay, five attacks take about five seconds, so she's nearly always got an extra 50% strategy, so her skills are an extra 50% better. So she gets 15,000 extra attack, 50% control resilience, and she deals about 50,000 damage in a single line. And then the Fire and Blood, which with her Queen's Blessing, so after five seconds it will proc higher, which adds 170 to all attributes, or 135 without the Queen's Blessing. So there's going to be another 10%. It's an extra, it's an extra fifteen percent on her command. It's an extra eight percent on her prowess, and it's an extra ten percent on her strategy. It's just she's a really powerful damage dealer with yeah. the highest base attack in the game, I think. And I definitely noticed that because uh, first of all, all the all the top players use her, and second of all, she murders. She murders like mad. She is yeah. incredibly high damage. Um, it's, the, it's the highest base attack in the game. Like, there are other attacks that can climb higher. Like, Uma can end up with more. Uh, no, that's defense, sorry. Uh, Arya can end up with more total. But Daenerys has that attack from the get-go. Okay, so I kind of want to... Okay, she has nothing to boost others, but she will do a massive chunk of damage. I think about four in the Weirwood. Four... Yeah, she doesn't have any stun, she doesn't have any heals. It's just a massive amount of damage, but there's no synergy. And Weirwood is all about getting those heroes working with each other, so four seems about good. 
Although training grounds five. five. Yeah, five yeah. definitely. She well you you put T on there and you think you're good. Or you put Arya there and then you know, Arya ramps up, but Daenerys does at least half of that from the start. It, yeah, but Daenerys can, and the thing is, Daenerys can also one shot Arya if she's in the back row. Like, being in the back row isn't necessarily protection. You can't put the squishiest heroes in the back row against Daenerys because the fire ability will kill them. Yeah, definitely. And if, she's, leaders, if yeah. she's not in the middle, she can easily hit three commanders. Rebel Leaders five? Yeah, it's a spear. You kind of want her. It's a spear and it's the highest base attack in the game. Damage output five. Support zero, con crowd control zero, skills five. There's so I'm, much damage, why not? There's so much damage, but I'm going to say four. There's nothing unique about them. They all boost the damage, but in terms of damage, while it's very high, it's not the highest in the game. If it was the highest damage in the game, then yes, but it, it, it can't go as high as some others. So in longer fights, it can be a bit of a disadvantage. Okay. Combat advancement is 5, total defense, total health. Yep. 20 that's, that's the 5 combat advancement. Okay, uh, friendship. Um, didn't you have it somewhere in Discord? The command said I don't. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I think it's a 5 easy. Um, she's very, 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 very. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember it being like her and Jon Snow are 5s. <laughs> okay, so Daenerys has, yeah, books, leadership 5, combat rate 5, command 5. 15 overall. It's a 5. Okay, that is... Uh, <laughs> 33. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. Fuck in hell. <laughs> it's 33. Yeah, you can't... You can't not give it her. She, she has the highest price tag for a reason. And I think we can start with that. You do realize if you don't do Daenerys' uh, title, I'm going to read it out when it's my turn. I'll do it. 